Coca-Cola is not selling black sugar water. They're selling happiness, right? So for instance, if you go to dance school and you pretend that you're selling dance steps, I can guarantee you that the guy around the corner that stands that sells happiness or familiarity or uh, get you into a social environment, that guy will sell out the classes and you won't. Okay. Because people don't get in for your dance steps. I can guarantee you that shit. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, today broadcasting to you live, Francesca from Two Left Feet Podcast. The tropical sun berry has brought around that guepa. Bradel Miguel from Guepa has talked about marketing, marketing, how to market yourself as a dancer, your business, how important marketing is. Oh my God, we're about to get run over. <laughs> also, learn about the history of Guepa. Stay tuned, this is an amazing episode. Check it out. Hey, all right, so I am now on the line with a Mr. Bridel Miguel, who uh, is the currently the marketing manager for Wepa. Wepa, Wepa, how you say it, man? Yes, man, it's exactly how you say it. My name is <laughs> Bridal, and that you say, Wepa! Hey, hey, so up, man. So if I'm not mistaken, you were born in Cortisol, but you currently live in the Netherlands, is that right? That's exactly right, man. I was born in Curacao, a small island with no more than 120,000 people in it. Uh, yeah. 365 days of summer out there. And now oh, that live, sounds awesome. Yeah, man. Now I live in Holland, and if you get 10 days of summer, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so real quick, um, for people who might not know, uh, WEPA is a modern and creative visual production company and you help brand and promote performers dance concepts latin music as well as latin events is that correct exactly man hey, actually that's... there is a simpler way to say it okay we want we want to make everybody happy and we believe that with it with uh, getting everybody dancing latin yeah. latin we believe that people will get happy right yeah yeah so that's why we promote it so heavily because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if everybody gets to know Latin and start dancing it, we believe that the world will become a better place, man. That that's I believe it. it. Yeah, I believe it, man. That's it. Hey, I wanna I wanna ask you this real quick, man. Um, you know, I've never I've never been to Cortisol, man. Please tell me about, you know, your childhood growing up there, man. What was that like? You can't Curacao is like a mingle mush of I think 150 nationalities. Uh, so it's small, but it was like a hub for the slavery uh, back in the days. So all kind of people live there. So uh, basically, everybody speaks at least four languages. Wow. Yeah. Um, everybody uh, is happy because the sun is out. Um, <laughs> Latin is like you are born with it. It's not something that you went to a dance school to learn it. Okay. Uh, uh, blue seas, uh, clean water. Hey, hey. Uh, like a, a basic tourist island, man. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, I'm I'm curious, man. So, um, I, I Curacao. You said it's off the. It's a Caribbean island, correct? Yeah, just so, in front of Venezuela. Oh, okay. So, so as um, I guess you grew up speaking Spanish or what? Is Spanish one of the languages you learned as a child? Yeah, as I told you, as you speak at least four languages there. So, the native language there is Papiamento. Oh, wow. I think not more than half a million people in the world speak that language. Uh, next to that, you speak standard English. 
Spanish, and Dutch. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so everybody does that. It's not like uh, something special for you to speak four languages there. Uh, and okay, I have to be honest also, whenever you are not doing so only one thing, like in this case, speaking four languages, those four languages are not on spot. So <laughs> you will get somebody start to th starting the sentence in, in English, finishing it up in oh, Spanish. That's and crazy. And throwing a few words in there of Dutch. It's crazy. But we understand each other. <laughs> uh -huh. That's so cool, man. I, I'm so jealous, man, because I'm, I, you know, I only grew up speaking English, man. I would love to be multilingual like you, man. Yeah, man. It, it has its benefit, definitely. And of with course. This thing, with this grip of thing, of course, we can talk to actually everybody. Exactly, in the world. man. That's so awesome, man. You, you have a, a, a farther outreach. You can communicate with more people, man. Yeah, man. Exactly yeah, that's that. so cool. But tell me, though, man. Uh, tell me about your childhood, man. You know, what was it like growing up in, in Curaçao? What does it, uh, I think it's like for everybody, man. But for us, uh, every day outside because it's sunny the whole day, right? Uh -huh. It's not like in Holland that you have uh, half an hour of sun every day that you can go outside with your son. It's like you live outside, bro. Ah. Uh, and one of the big... I've been talking to this with my friends a few days back. Like, when you finish up with your work at five, like you or so, it's like a standard thing to go grab a drink with your friends or go to the beach. Yeah, yeah that sounds awesome. Yeah, man. Like, in other parts of the world, you just go... I don't know, man. Go maybe to the gym. And then and go home. Yeah, and then go home or something. Yeah, man. It's Netflix and couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not the life we, we are accustomed with, man. No, I definitely understand that, bro. I, I'm curious, man. So, you know, you're growing up in, in Curaçao as a child. Um, was Is dancing a big thing there? You know, at, growing up, was dancing a big thing in your childhood? Again, man, you don't go to the dance school there to dance you just born with it uh mm. we don't call it a latin party it's just a party this is a party so no yeah. so no yeah yeah right and, and, and actually that's one of the way one of the main reasons we wanted to promote real latin to the world because when we arrived in uh holland and i, I started talking to my business partner uh, we got into a Latin bar this year, and one of the main things that it still frustrates me is like you got four rooms, man. Uh -huh. like, I got a bachata room, and it, nowadays you can even get like a bachata sensual room, exactly right, right, room, a kizomba room, a salsa room. And it can quick. A few years back, we went to a party. There were seven rooms, man. Wow. Yeah, man. So every every niche got her own room there. But the crazy thing in Curacao is like, if you cannot dance salsa, bro, you just stand on the corner, Aye. talk to each other, drink something, and it's part of the social life, right? Here somebody comes into a party, or I think in the U.S. also. They come to a party, they pay not so much to get in, and they want to dance for six hours straight without even going to the bathroom. If, <laughs> if the DJ doesn't play what they like, they will go to the DJ and say like, hey, that's, hey, not, what, that's not what I like, man. Play my tune. I mean, bro, um, if you don't like the tune, just go step to the side, talk to somebody. Yeah. And it's a social event. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's it's a difference, man. I guess once you start paying for it, a different, it's a different atmosphere, or what? I, I don't think so, man. Oh, it, it, it should it shouldn't be like that. That when you pay for it, you expect the DJ to play only what you want. If you okay. want, if you want the DJ to play exactly what you want, bring your own Spotify list, 
uh-huh. to your uh-huh. own living room. Bro. Yeah, okay, <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> it's a social, it's a social gathering. So get there and get social. Yeah, yeah. I get what I mean. That. Yeah, I do, man. So that's one of the things we want to do, uh, people to know. Um, and that's why we started doing our own parties, man. Hey. Check it out. I love Latin. It's uh, one of the first Guepa events ever, and we will take over the world with this thing. That sounds awesome. I, I want to, I definitely want to get into all that, man. Um, you know, but I, I want to get back to, you know, I guess, you know, growing up in Kurdistan, I say, you know, you go to just parties, social events, and everything, man. Um, yeah. when you were, I guess, learning to sauce, is that just something, you know, you kind of imitated what you saw? Is that how it was back then? Everyone was dancing, you kind of just picked it up that way, right? To pick it up that way, and most people learn it from their parents, man. Right, right, okay, so no. So it's, it's again, it's not only a social thing, it's like a fam- familiar thing. So you, you, you can remember dancing with your mom and your sisters, I guess, or your family, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, with hey. your aunties. <laughs> uh, and there is always a, an uncle there that thinks that he is Michael Jackson of Latin Town. <laughs> you know what I mean? That he, yeah, he, man. He got the moves, right? So he, he got the moves. Yeah, he, he wants to show it to you like, uh, watch me, watch me. I know how to dance. Most of the time, it sounds like that. But Let me ask you this, man. Let me ask you this, man. Um, how important was, you know, I guess, music in your household or maybe in Cordes How important is music, man? Bro, if you ask, I mean, any person that lived or grew up in Curacao, they will tell you that on Sunday morning, it's no joke. Everybody has like a salsa uh, upbringing. Okay. Uh, there is like a salsa show in there uh, on Curacao, and it's like a guy called Percy with his friends, uh, and they. Every, I, I, I think like every parent uh, plays uh, salsa in the morning, man. Sunday morning is salsa time. Is it the salsa and clean up? You know, play music and clean or what? Not even, man. Just okay. Just put, just put it on. Okay, show sure uh, enough. Okay. Yeah, and on, and on, again, yes. When your mom cleans, it's uh, put a put the Latin tunes on and dance. Dance while you clean. I mean, <laughs> most Latin people will recognize that thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. My girl talks about that all the time, man. So I definitely understand that, man. <laughs> Got you, man. So, um, so you're growing up cortisol, um, you know, enjoying life. I guess what happens after you graduate high school? Like, you know, do you go to college in cortisol, or you know, what happens after that? Most people get to Holland. That's why I get to Holland also. So after high school, uh, there are a few uh, bachelors there, even a few masters. But back in the days, one of the few options you got was go to Holland, man. Because if you didn't know, Curacao is part, still part of the Dutch kingdom. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, we are still part of the coloni- colonialism thing. Uh, and so we are attached to Holland. So, uh, if you want to learn more, you go to Holland, man. Okay, and and so that's that's what you do, university in Holland. Yes. And, and I'm curious, what did you go for? What, what were you uh, majoring? What were you studying? I'm I'm a bachelor in economics, man. Um, economics and marketing. That's it. So I started out as an accountant. Okay, but, okay, so no. I, I couldn't take it. <laughs> so, um, let me ask you this real quick, man. You know, so so going from cortisol to Holland, what was that transition like? You know, what, what was it like moving to a completely new country, right? No, for us, it's crazy, man. And, and, and we, Curacao, have been talking about it because it's like a brain drain. Every year, the most smart people of the island leave the island to go to Holland, in this case, or nowadays even to the U.S. Um, for the university. And when they get there, they get into a totally different envi- environment. I mean, when people get out, they are 18, 17, 18, 
at the prime of your teenage, right? Exactly, right? yeah. Exactly with the, the moment when you get formed, right? So when you get here, again, it's a big difference, bro. Like uh, when you finish school, you just go chill at the beach with your friends or in your garden with your friends or, or alone, it doesn't matter. And 365 days of sun. Here, if you get sun, you're lucky. Oh. Uh, and after work, go to the beach. That's not something that you consider standard. Okay. Uh, uh, and the way social contacts go over here is way different, man. Everybody, okay. I'm curious how talk to each other just because you are standing two meters from apart from each other. It's just greet each other. Here, somebody greet each other only when they actually need somebody for something from you. Okay, it's different, man. Yeah, but it's a different upbringing, so I cannot blame Dutch people for the way they treat each other. It's just the way they do it. Yeah, yeah. And at the I, end of the day, I have to be honest, man. Uh, I have learned how to enjoy life on fewer stuff about how to do business and learn it here. Okay, right, 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 of course. Because those Dutch people, they know how to do business. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely understand that, man. So, um, so, you know, I guess you go from Cortisol to, you know, uh, Holland. Uh, you start majoring in economics and everything. I guess, tell me, how how did you get introduced to uh, Mr. Alexis Anthony? I believe that's the your co-director, right? Of no, 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 man. That's a crazy story, actually, because this guy was my... Uh, uh, I had a, a photography company. Ah, and at every event I go, I see this guy with his team. I was like, bro, this guy's getting my job, right? So after a few months of seeing him everywhere I was, I started talking to him like, okay, we can go to, uh, to this, like going head to head against each other. Or we or... can bundle our uh, strengths and make something bigger. Yeah, man. And that's how it started, actually, man. So after a while, his business bumped. Uh, I stopped mine, and we throw everything on the table. Um, we were brainstorming this thing for at least nine months. And uh, after that, we started, man. Oh, I, I'm very curious, man. Um, I guess, what got you into photography, man? How did that come about? Is that like a hobby of yours as a child, or how did you get into that? No, man. <laughs> this is this. Uh, my ex-wife wanted to get a very expensive camera, right? And I told her, okay, the only way I'm getting you that camera is if we can make a business out of it. Of course, yeah, man. Sure enough. That's it, man. Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that, man. So uh, uh, we made the business out of it. We were quite successful in. Uh, when doing it. Hey, that's uh, awesome. And uh, just because I applied marketing things I saw outside of uh, photography business and applied it. Psst. Hey, kid, come here. Hey, if you could like and subscribe for the channel, that'd be amazing. Let's get back to the man. show. I want to ask you this, man. You know, maybe for, maybe for myself and others who, you know, want to improve their marketing skills, man. Can you give us any hints or tips on how to become, you know, I guess, better marketers of our products and everything, man? Uh, it's simple, man. Uh, first thing, first, marketing, it's kind of a trick, but most people don't know what a trick is. Hey, please uh, inform us. Yeah, so the trick is to, at first, know what you're selling. Okay, and every time I got a new client, I explain Coca Cola is not selling black sugar water. They're selling happiness, right? So, for instance, if you got a dance school and you pretend that you're selling dance steps, I can guarantee you that the guy around the corner that stands that sells happiness 
or familiarity or uh, get to into a social environment, that guy will sell out the classes and you won't. Okay. Because people don't get in for your dance steps. I can guarantee you that shit. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, so wait, let me ask you this then. Um, I guess, how do you, how does one sell happiness or sell, you know, a social environment or familiarity? How do, how do you go about that? You have to ask yourself, okay, uh, people, everybody uh, has five senses, right? So you can see, you can hear, you can feel, you can taste, and you can... See, touch, hear, smell, taste. Smell, smell, oh, smell was the okay. one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so actually, when, when, when you are talking about happiness, you can, you can ask yourself, Whenever I think about happiness, how am I feeling? Okay. Whenever I think about happiness, what I'm smelling, what I'm thinking about happiness, what I'm hearing, mm. what I'm thinking about happiness, what I'm seeing. And the only thing you have to do is uh, wrap your product in those things that you see, hear, smell, touch, feel. That's it. Yeah. It sounds very, very simple now, but at the end of the day, uh, I can give you a seminar and charge you three thousand dollars <laughs> for it. But I will just give you more examples so you can understand it. Better. Please, please. No, but 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 at the end of the day, it's simple. You have to. People react. The most decisions, even if it, if they tell you it, it's not like that, is based on emotions, right? Mm, right, I, I believe that. And emotions are triggered by your senses. There is no way um, other. It, it, it's only triggered by your five senses you got. Okay? Uh, even the sixth sense people talk about, it's a combination of your five senses. Yeah, right. right. That makes sense. You get it? So you have to trigger those five, those five senses senses in a way or another and uh, then you got clients man and ask yourself okay at least when you start putting out your product out there you ask to out ask yourself what am i looking for uh, what are my who are my clients what are their problems how can i fix that for them and how will people feel at the end, when they consume my product. So how will their five senses react at the end when, when they got in touch with my product? So um, just for example, if, if, uh, what is your main focus with this podcast, actually? Okay, so no, man. Um, my main focus or goal of this podcast is kind of I want to like give back to the dance community, man. So I doing that by interviewing some amazing people who are doing some amazing things for the dance community, man. You know, hearing their story, getting some tips and hints from their life. You know, I'm just trying to learn about them, you know, man. So people in your in your case, one of the first things that people uh, will be in tune with when in in the sense of their five senses is hearing or what yeah right hearing. right right so what do you want them to hear at the end that's what you have to think about right. uh, uh but what do you want to talk about? what do you want them to talk about after uh they hear whatever you have on your podcast but what do you want them to see what do you how do you want them what do you want them to touch uh you have to give them all of that for it to become a successful product uh, the the guy uh, okay, you know lace, lace like in the chips. Oh, the chips, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Yes, man. Okay, those guys actually are giving you fried potatoes, right? It's yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> it's it's not a <laughs> difficult product, just fried potatoes. But these guys invest a lot of money how the sound of the package. 
is mm. when you open it up. I can guarantee you can open up a million package of plays. It will sound on every corner of the world the same. Okay, okay. Exactly the same. Because actually they just want you to open up a pack and have the feeling that you had the chips in your mouth. Mm. You get it? Yeah. That's it, man. Uh, and again, um, I cannot give you everything in 15 minutes, but if you can trigger all those five senses, uh, people will keep coming back, man. No, that makes a lot of sense, man. That that does make a lot of sense, man. I I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. So um, let me ask you this, man. So you know, you move to Holland. Mm-hmm. You know, you uh, and you're doing photography. You know, and you you join up with Mr. Anthony. Yes. And so, do you all create a photography company? What come? What happens? You know, when y'all join up, what what do y'all do? The idea is to uh, create the biggest Latin dance community in the world. So, so, so when y'all joined up, that that's when y'all created Weppa, or were y'all still doing photography at that time? Oh no, we created Weppa together uh-huh. uh, to make the biggest Latin dance community in the world. Uh, but we saw a spot that one of the biggest problem five years back was that Weppa. If if I'm talking marketing, uh, if I'm, I'm talking Latin, when you when you dance, you feel something, right? Of course. So, at least let's talk about those five senses, uh, senses in the Latin dance scene. Okay, when you smell it, you smell like uh, I smell a barbecue, uh, cocktails, uh, great smell of ladies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. What what I see is smells, moving hips. Uh, skirts, guys with uh, very, very uh, color, color uh, shirts. Colorful, yeah, colorful, right, right, right. Colorful shirts. Uh, 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 I'm talking about hearing it. You hear bachata, salsa, the music, right? Merengue, but also people you, talking about right? it. Right? You hear like, guapa, guapa, and, and you hear guapa. <laughs> exactly that. So, <laughs> And one of the things you, whenever you, when you want to introduce more people to something they don't know, you have to give it, give it to a level they are accustomed to it. Okay. So in Latin dance world's uh, case, five years back, um, they had one main problem and videography was not something that was standard. Like, the biggest Latin dance events didn't even have videographers in there. The photographers were like a friend of a friend who just made something up. The flyers, when we did our research, we we have seen flyers made in paint, bro. You know what is okay. paint? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Microsoft Paint, MS Paint. Microsoft Paint, bro. Okay, like, wow. Yeah. I, 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 what? But still, was the making a lot of impression on me on that day was that I wanted to know how many people went to a party who, who had a flyer made in paint, right? <laughs> I mean, if if you make nowadays a flyer in paint, I expect two people to show up, you and yeah. a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> like you have no respect for that thing. Uh, but the back then, when we go to those parties like that, you still get like 200, 300 people there. And then I know like, okay, so it's not about what people see. Right, right. Right now. It, whenever you get in, it's that's, not that's what about, matters. Yeah, it's not, it's not what you see anymore. But those, I like, I like all the people that got in and and cannot do anything else than only dance Latin. I call them Latin junkies. Latin uh, junkies. Yeah, Sa- because, saceros, right away. No, no. Yeah, but I, I, I call them Latin junkies for one reason. Because they are there, they don't worry about the environment anymore. They're only there for, the, for their fix, right? For their fix. But they are the ones who will also 
claim that they are always seeing the same people every weekend. Right, right. Yeah. But then I started asking everybody, but what are you doing to reach more people? And then they start, start talking about uh, trying to give more classes, free class. I mean, bro, you can give as many free classes as you want, but uh, if people do, if your flyer to invite people to your free classes is made in paint, nobody uh, goes. Right, to right. So that's why we wanted to uh, make the way you see Latin in this case with photography and videography way, way higher. Yeah. So be better. Uh, and I'm happy about that. And I'm not saying we are the only one that um, got it at this level. But nowadays, if you have a big event and you don't have a videographer oh, man. Or in there, you're just lost now. Of course, man. Yeah, yeah. Real quick, I want to ask you this, man. Um, you know, I've never been to you know Holland or the Netherlands. Yeah. What What is What is the dance community like over there? Is there a big, you know, salsa bachata kizumba scene over there, or is it still a small group? It's small compared to what it could be, right? It's, oh, okay. Um, I mean, in Holland, you have seventeen million people, uh, in it. But I think the community is no no bigger than fifty thousand. Okay. Uh, uh, but but it's the same in the U.S., right? And in Europe, and let me talk about Holland in this case. People are not accustomed to dance, so dance is like an exotic thing. Okay. It's black guys that come from the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. So. If those black guys that come from the Caribbean keep it only for themselves and don't don't make it uh, attractive enough for the other people to get in, right, they right, will, they will never come in, come even in touch with it. That's why we started Grabber Man mm -hmm. um, because we wanted to make it like a viral thing so people see like okay, two hundred fifty thousand people following this thing. What is it then? Right, and then it's following one post. After that, they see two, three, four, five on a day. And I don't have to tell you, man, as soon as you get that grip of feeling, uh, it will never leave you. Never. I, I'm, I'm very curious to hear, man. Um, you know, I guess, um, tell me about, you know, that, that, that beginning stage, that, that, that first year when you both started WEPA. What, what what was that like, man? You know, you're opening a new business, starting a new endeavor. What was that like? Well, for instance, we were one of the few uh, persons in Holland to make professional dance videos during during parties. So uh, in the first year, people were very very happy. I'm talking about the professional dancer were like finally something, okay. somebody is thing serious. Uh, so uh, there was a moment that we were arrived there with our crew and we were people will start clapping like we're in the house. Yeah. Hey, hey, so hey. Today we will get great videos. But now that's a standard. I'm happy about that. Like Right, right. It is standard. Yeah. So there are more guys doing that and I applaud them. Uh, uh, our friends of Social Dance TV and uh, Social Dance World. Uh, salsa Malsa. Yes, yeah, there's so many. There's so many, bro. So Malsa, I don't know, man. There are a lot of them, and they do a great job. Um, because without them, uh, we are not like claiming this Latin world. Like, uh, I mean, we are here to help everybody uh, to make this thing as sexy as possible, so everybody can get in. Because right. our main objective is. To get everybody to to be at least have the chance to get in touch with Latin dance, so then they can decide if they want it or not. Right. Because the main problem Latin dance has right now is that most people that don't do it, they have never heard of it. They mm. heard that they maybe heard that a friend of them is like one of those Latin junkies, but they don't get it. Right. Right. 
get, you get those mean situations. This is what I do. This is what my family thinks. This is what my family, uh, this is what my friends thinks. Uh, and, and this is actually how I feel. Mm. You, you, you know those memes, right? Yeah, yeah, I know memes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, in, in, the, in, our, in our things, like helping as many, as many people perfect their marketing, and that, that means everything, man. Yeah. Everything that, that can touch is those five senses. I mean, uh, if, if you can fix your Instagram, that will help us all by all reach more people. Yeah. So you fix your Facebook, your YouTube, get more podcasts out there. Bro, it, it will help. Yeah. Uh, for, for my thing, is, it's, it's like this, man. If one of your friends that don't dance salsa, okay, that only listen to hip hop, but for instance, they just hear our story today and they think, oh, let me check Guepa. And, hey. and it's. And they check up and after two, three weeks of seeing all those ladies and guys having yeah. a lot of fun on Instagram. It's they, contagious. You think I should check one of those parties? Hey, that's yeah. exactly what we want. That's <laughs> exactly what we want. I understand that. I definitely do, man. So, so I, I guess you all, you all started out pretty much just going to social events and just, and just recording, right? Or what? Yeah. And just posting that on the page? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sure enough. That's that's the grind and the hustle right there. Exactly, man. And then uh, Instagram came around the corner. Mm. And how, how big? How big was Instagram for you? Big, oh. life changing, man. Life changing. Life changing, bro. And, like, and please, why life changing? Please tell me. No, because when we got into Instagram. Uh, Again, one of the main problems uh, Latin scene had five years ago is that it was not visible enough. And this was like one big vision board, right? Um, so that's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, and the way you can build a community there, uh, back then and still now, is uh, way faster than any, anywhere else, any social, uh, social channel out of there. So, yes, life changing, man. Life changing. Hey, hey. So I wanna let, let me ask you this, man. Um, uh, yeah, you um, I, I'm very interested to hear about your journey from you know zero followers all the way to I believe you have three hundred and thirty seven thousand followers right now, man. Tell me, um, tell me about that journey, please, man. Cause that's that's very inspiring for. For others, no man. It's, I got, we got a question at least twenty times a day. But again, you start with two, two, two followers. In our case, it was me and Alexis. <laughs> 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 you get it. So if you start the Instagram account tomorrow, it's you and maybe your girlfriend, boyfriend. Exactly. It doesn't right. Matter. Right. Everybody starts with no more than ten followers. Right. Is what you do and what your intention is. So, at first, you have to decide what is the big goal. Our goal was to get as many people just to know that this Latin thing exists, right? Um, build a community. That's our main uh, second goal, and bring happiness to the world. That's our third, third main goal also. So. We started brainstorming. How can we make it visible, man, on this vision board? And when starting as executing it, uh, we were one of the first guys that implemented the whole a branded hashtag thing in okay. the Latin thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it worked very well for us because uh, I think uh, last week I got the report. We have like more than hundred thousand. The hashtag was used more than 100,000 times uh, in the past uh, two years. So, yeah, 100,000, wow. So it's not like us spreading the word anymore. It's like everybody out there spreading. The yeah, word. yeah, exactly. You get it? Um, so it, it starts with, with, with your goal and how you 
you got those senses, man. Yeah. How do you attack those five senses? So if, if at the end of the day we want to reach it, that guapa means uh, the taste. So it's Latin food. Uh-huh. It's Latin music. What you hear, it's what you see. Is Latin dance. Uh, uh, what you will feel is the happiness. Uh, so we want to attack all those. Like, we want to yeah. trigger all those five senses. No, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes a lot of sense, man. Uh, and, and, and most people on Instagram now uh, have one problem. Man. Uh, What's that? What's that? I, 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 and actually, uh, most brands out there, it's not even Latin dance only. It's like most businesses out there. Um, they only do it for themselves. Okay. They don't do it to help other people. Uh, and uh, one standard question I have for my coaching clients is like, where does money come from? Do you know that? Please tell me. I would love to know. I, I'll give you two chances to, to, to give it a okay. try, man. All right, okay. So where does money come from? Um yes. money comes from me buying something. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay, all right, hold on. Give me all right, hold on, one more, one more. Um uh so, so you're not talking about who makes the money, right? That's not what you're talking about, right? Where does your money come from? Where does your money come from? Oh, okay. So I mean the treasury from the US Treasury, they make they make they print all that, right? That's not true, man. Okay. Okay, man. The only the only one the only entity in the world that can give you money is somebody else. Okay, okay? so enough. Because um the treasury can print it, but if nobody else gives it to you, you won't get the money. Okay, yeah, I heard. Yes basic okay and just to keep it short the only way somebody else will give you money is when well when they feel help exactly when you help them they will give you money you, uh, you give them value right yeah right uh, I, I don't even want to talk about the value thing i'm talking about helping okay okay, okay. because uh, it's i want to keep it simple man like a kid if you ask a kid to help you they know what you mean. If you, okay. if you ask a kid of five, give me value, they will look like, huh? What okay, you you're right. About? You're right. You Fair it? enough. So just help somebody else. That's the only way to get the business going. Um, so if I ask an artist why you're doing this and all the reasons you are giving me is because you wanted blah, 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 you wanted this, you wanted to, you wanted, you wanted. That's the main reason why you're failing, man. Okay. Because you're not trying to help everybody else. You're trying to help yourself. And if you have to give yourself the money, you ain't getting none, man. Okay. Because you can't give yourself more money than you have. So if you have zero dollars, you will get <laughs> zero dollars. <laughs> so, so the goal should be to try and help others. Is that what you're saying? That's it, man. And the only thing you have to know is what is their problem and how can I help them with the skills and passion I have? If you combine your skills and your passion and ask your people what do they need for you to help them, you have a business man. Simple as that. Hey, hey. And then the marketing is, is a pretty easy because the only thing you have to ask yourself is why you do this. Mm. And try to trigger all those five senses. Okay. Oh, I got to ask you then, and I have to ask you, man. Um, What problem is Guepa solving then? Is it helping market dancers and social events? Is that, is that the problem you're solving? And the, main, it... the main problem we are solving is that uh, we are prob- we're solving a lot, but the main problem we are trying to solve is the lack of happiness in the world, right? <laughs> that's a big problem, man. That's a huge that, problem. <laughs> that's a huge problem. So uh, by, <laughs> by using our skills, combining with our, our passion for Latin dance, we are trying to bring this happiness to the world so more people will become more happy, okay? Uh, but again, the people that don't know Latin dance, 
that they are not, are not only, they are not the only ones who are our uh, target, target group. Right, 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 right. Right, so the people in the Latin dance scene are our target group also. So you, you can uh, uh, split that scene into two parts, like the professionals and the social dancers. The social guys will try to give them as much as possible, but but the professional in this case, if you're talking marketing wise, we're trying to help them because if we help them, they will reach more people. Right, you know, at right. The end of the day, will help us reach our our goal, which is get more people to get introduced to Latin dance, so more people can get happy. And that's it. Hmm. So I'm trying to help more people. We're trying to help more people, so. They can help us achieve our goal. Okay, I, I think it sounds like um, it sounds like very like counterintuitive to what they may teach in schools. You know, mm-hmm. I it know. Does. Yeah, it is. It is. They don't teach you this in school. They don't. Nobody, know. nobody asks you where money comes from. Man. Actually, <laughs> if the teacher knew that, most of the time they won't become a teacher. Hey, hey, that's all you're right about that, man. I wanna um let me ask you this real quick, man. So so you started Guapa, you know, five years ago. Um, yeah. were you still an accountant at that time? Yes, man. Okay. I was, and, I was doing it part time, man. And two oh, years and ago we went all in on this and that's okay. when you saw the big jump also. Hey, okay, well then that, that leads me to it, man. Um you know, I guess what what convinced you all to go all in on this? You know, why why did you leave your accounting job and go all in with this? Because it's your calling, man. I'm talking the passion thing. It, I'm getting on slope, slippery slope here, okay? But when people ask me who's God, I'm talking when you hear when you close your eyes. And there is a guy talking to you in there or a girl talking to you in there. And you're asking yourself why you didn't go and dance more. Why you didn't help that somebody, that person, why you are at this job. That voice, that's God, man. So, it sucks, wow. Yeah, so um, that voice was talking to me like, this is not it, man. Okay. That grandpa thing is it, man. Hey, but hey. most people don't do it because they are afraid. Right, right. And it, it was a struggle. Sometimes it is a struggle, but we know exactly why we do it. So at the end of the day, uh, we are here to help people, man, mm. as much as possible. Yeah. And so, and so, so tell me this, man. You know, um. I guess what uh what changed from when you went part time with Webby to going full time? You know, you're you're fully focused on it now, and it pretty much becomes your your business, man. So, I guess what do you start to do differently? Yeah, you you already said it, man. Focus. Okay, okay. Focus, man, because uh, fo- focus. And, and I don't know if you read the book that said. Whenever you put ten thousand hours into something, you will become a ma- master. Right, right, exactly. So Malcolm Gladwell, just check it out. Um, but again, if you put in full time focus on one thing, you become a master way faster. I mean, yeah, sure enough, simple as that. It's it's not so difficult, right? So actually, that's it, man. Okay. That's it. Just focus, and uh, people will. People are still calling me crazy. Uh, I work too much. There is no balance. Uh, I, I'm working for my legacy, man. For our legacy here. Okay. Uh, uh, um, to make as many people as as happy as possible in this world, and to leave this grip of stamp on the world. That's awesome. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I know enough people. That they have that voice that they just called God in their in their head, uh, even two days before they die, and when they're lying down there on their uh, on their on Death their bed, bed 
Right. And they're that bad, just waiting to die their asses self. Why did I not follow my regret? Passion? It's regret, man. I don't know. I like I say a lot, but I don't regret that thing. Okay, yeah, that's big, man. That's big, man. So, so I guess real quick, man. Um, I guess is there any anything you can say to maybe help someone take that leap of faith, man? You know, pursue their dream, pursue their passion. Is there anything you can say to help them, or not? Nah. First thing first, don't stop at your job. Okay. Okay. It's crazy. It sounds like uh, contradictive to what I said before. But don't just stop with the job, okay? Ask yourself first, what is my passion? And that's very, it's actually pretty easy to know that. Close your eyes and let it guide it. That, that God, that God voice I just called it right now. Mm-hmm, yeah. Let, let, let it talk to you, man. It, it, that will come up pretty, pretty, pretty fast. The only problem with most people is, that the thing will come up pretty fast. They will only tell themselves, no, I cannot make that work. Mm. So stop telling yourself you cannot make it work. Listen to that. Ask yourself then, what are the skills I got right now? And what are the skills I need to make that dream happen? Okay. So, so if you want to become the best dancer, uh, dance teacher out there, and you are a very good social dancer, but you don't know nothing about teaching, maybe you have to go and take some classes about teaching yeah. before, you job, before you stop at your job. Because when your passion, in this case, dancing, and your skills of teaching match each other, then you can go outside and help as, much, as many people in a very good way to teach them dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, what happens is a lot of people have like a passion for dance. They want to teach it to somebody, but they don't have the skill to teach. Right. It's, 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 teaching is a skill, man. Definitely. That's definitely a skill, bro. It's it's not a passion thing. It's like the, the, the dancing is a passion thing. Right, passion right. Thing. But the teaching is a skill. <laughs> yes, so, yes. Yeah, if you want to become a dance teacher, you have to get the skills down yes, first. Yes. Right. So uh, as soon as you want to help as many people as as good as possible, because don't forget, if you want to have a business, somebody has to feel themselves helped to give you the money so exactly. you can run that business. So if you don't have the skills to match the dancing te- dance teachers uh, dance teacher dream you have, then nobody will give you money. Right. And that's why you're failing. Yeah. That's one of Big things, but here it goes, okay? okay? Because when you want when you want to become a dance teacher, the only okay, I'm maybe I'm offending a few people out there, but <laughs> no, no, to keep it simple, now right, you right, need right. Like, passion for dance, and you need to teach teaching skills, right? If you got that, you got dance teacher, you go out there and help people dancing. But when you want a dance business, mm. then you need something more than dancing and your teaching skills. Yeah, you need our business skill, right? Yeah, man. And that business skills is the main problem right now, man. And I, and I can go out and talk a lot about the other things we went through to help each other, but... One thing I know and one thing we know at this company is marketing, Okay. right? So when I'm talking about uh, my big dream and my skill, I try, I try to help as many people with the marketing, which I know is one of our best skills in our, in our company. So um, I know for a fact mo- most people don't know shit about marketing. Man. Okay, fair sure enough. Yeah, man, and and, and 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 that and that's the main problem because they it's it's most artists have this problem, right? They think that when they make like a big and the best hammer out there, and the, in our case, let's keep it dancing wise, they have the 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 most smooth, sexy, and attractive 
uh, uh, dance moves out there that the right. people will just come around the corner and say, hey, I could smell that you have those dance moves. <laughs> Bro, if you don't know how to market those dance skills, nobody will come to you. Okay? I say the thing, I think that's is crazy. You know, I guess a lot of people are dancing. It's kind of getting oversaturated, right? Everyone's dancing right now. That's a true, man. It's not. Again, bro, in the world, there are 7 billion people. I can yeah. guarantee you, if you go outside right now and start asking 10 people, do you dance? Okay. Nine will tell you no. no. Okay, well, here's what I mean, though. Here's what I mean. If you go on Instagram and search dancing, you're going to be bombarded with people dancing. That's what I mean, though. Again, there are still at least okay. 6 billion I've never heard of that thing before. Okay. No, no, okay. Yeah. So my problem is not that there were a lot of people doing it. My problem is that a lot of people doing it badly. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in, in first place, uh, uh, they don't have the teaching skills. Okay. So when you go out there trying to learn somebody to teach you have to know uh to learn somebody to dance you have to know the teaching skills exactly. first. Right, 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 right. and when you say you have a dancing business in this case please know your business stuff to match your dancing yeah. uh dream okay so i i know um i know i believe you're a big fan of gary v is that right Gary V is the yeah. hey, that's the big company. So, so I guess in that instance, say you have a passion for dancing, yeah, um, and you want to get into, you want to make it a dance business. Would it be easier just to find someone who can do the business for you? No. No. Oh, you have to do it yourself. No. You have to partner up with him. Well, <laughs> that's, that's what, what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, part find a business partner who you're good at the dancing, they're good at the business, right? No. Uh, I, I, I will tell you my hack, okay? okay. This, help, this helped me big time. Whenever I want something, I will look up for somebody who already did it. I'm not talking about who already talked about it. I'm talking about who already did it. Mm -hmm. So if you, and, and this is my trick, and most people will call me crazy. They have been calling me crazy for, by, by doing this, <laughs> but this is how I do it. If, if, for instance, I want to become a dance business owner, right? And I only have a dance teaching skill, so I miss the rest. I will just go out to the guy that has the biggest dancing uh, dance school, dance business out there in, within my reach. All right. right. Um, if you want to actually touch somebody, it's within your zip code or within your state uh but let's be honest man i'm 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 sitting now in amsterdam you're sitting now in louisiana in, in louisiana we're still talking to each other man. Sure so you can get out and find somebody who already did it in the world and there <laughs> will be somebody that does exactly what you want and ask them to mentor you okay and if you cannot pay them this is the big hack I just work for them for free. In the meantime, I'm there working with them. Just keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and freaking learn, my friend. Mm. Work for free and learn. And in the meantime, whatever job you have, whatever money you have, put it into your skills. Okay. Because if you don't have those skills, you will never get the business mm -hmm. so uh if for instance you are lacking teaching skills go find somebody who can actually learn you how to teach mm -hmm. if you are lacking marketing skill go find somebody who already make a dancing brand big and ask them how did you do it yeah and don't expect them to give it to you for <laughs> Free. Please, because at the end of the day, they are running a business. So if exactly. even, if, even if they stop doing it to help you for free, they are losing money, man. Right, sure enough. Because in the meantime, they could have done something else, right? Right, right, right. 
So you have to give them something back also. So it's, and that's why when I didn't have money, I just worked for them for free. And nowadays there are a lot of courses out there. Yes. Please watch out for the courses. And when you buy a course, ask yourself, did this person reach the level I want to reach? Now that's a big thing. You got to qualify them, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't don't go out buy courses just because exactly, yeah. They are so it's you not gotta... because they don't sell your you have to buy it. Yeah, yeah, so sure enough, man. I wanna um I believe you told me you, you wanted to speak about uh you know, I guess a new opportunity you were offering. You were offering this new uh marketing for dancers, right? It's because you know most yeah, man. Press, yeah, most yeah, dancers don't understand we're... how important marketing is. Yeah, man, we are we are launching this thing called marketing for dancers because in in, in the past five years uh, a lot of things have changed. Uh, the dancers have gotten better. We have gotten some exposure out there because we got uh, world of dance and and those dance shows on TV got them better. Uh, we got help from social media. Um, I don't know, man. Internet, uh, everything out there, but you still have to know how to use them. Oh, no, and, mo and most people don't know how to use them, and they just doing whatever they think is best. And because they don't know enough, or they don't know nothing, they don't know. They don't do anything that has some impact. So. Uh, one of the main things uh, I've seen in the Latin dance scene, in, or in dancing in general, by the way, is that artists work on their craft with his dance or teaching, uh, but they don't work on the skill how to tell people that don't know you yet about that skill that you have right. and, what it, and what it will make you feel, see, hear, uh, exactly that what I started, how to, exactly, how, to, exactly. How, to, how to trigger the five senses, man. Uh, that's why we started this thing, it's, it will be on uh, www.marketingfordancers.com. Uh, we are launching also uh, on Guepa, we will start a new show called marketing tips for dancers watch out for that it will be totally free and if you really like it and you see okay this is what i think that can help me and it sounds like bridal this guy that talk like uh, like like somebody that knows what he's talking about yeah uh you can go like... you can I... go to market marketing for and check whatever whatever else we got there yeah, I feel I feel like um even that can go even beyond dancers, man. You don't have to be. I feel like you know anyone can get help on marketing. You know, you don't have to be specifically a dancer. I feel like that can help anyone. No, 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 no. I I know, but uh, we have been doing that for our, our business all. Right? Okay, I understand. Uh, right, right, right. But our passion is dancers, right? Sure enough, I understand. Uh, and I want to make this as specified as possible. Okay. Uh, for dancers, so. It will not be something like it's just too generic, all, I guess. All those courses out there, quick generic, talking about how you sell cars <laughs> when you were talking here, where you're trying to sell dance, right? Okay, so I understand one, that. Uh, so like a specific niche, a niche, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the tips and tricks you will get in there will be generic because, again, if you're talking about social media, it's social media, right? Uh, but you will always get some tips in there how you, you can use it as a dance teacher, dance business owner, or dance a social dancer. So, so in, in our world, I see it as big. We, you have the business owners, you have the teachers, and you have the performers. Those are the three uh, yeah. flavors you got in there. Uh, I wanna, yeah. I, I wanna ask you this, man. I wanna, I want to give value to people, man. Oh, I want you to. So, could you give me maybe two or three tips or hints right now? 
for dancers to improve their marketing? Number one, stop. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me ask. Let me let me start like this. Stop going after count of followers. Wow. So it's not about how much followers you got. So stop doing that stuff. And, and I can tell you very quickly why. Because you if you just why. if you just want followers and the followers are not engaged with you, the social media algorithm, uh, which you will hear us talk a lot about, and you whenever you want to know, know more about marketing, that's one of the first things you will see out there. Uh, actually, it's the thing that decides what to show what right, to right, which right. people on social media. Uh, it's the, 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 the big brother brain within the social media atmosphere. Um, nobody knows exactly how it works, but the guys that have been doing it for a long time can tell you have, what have been working, what not. Okay. So after posting 10,500 videos, uh, I can tell you exactly which video will work. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess you see that pattern, right? I guess it's a pattern or what? It's a pattern, man. It's a pattern and it still has to do with the five senses. Right? Sure so, enough. It, so, so Instagram, for instance, okay, let, let's, let's, let's keep it Instagram. Instagram, for instance, it's a vision board, right? So it should be very visually. People will decide within five seconds, actually nowadays within three seconds, if they will keep watching your video, okay? So if you throw in those slow ass intro moves that you don't see anything happening, whenever you start in dancing, Somebody's watching another video, man. They didn't like, they didn't come, they didn't do nothing on your video. So stop with those long intros. Give them the value right away. Right, okay, okay. Okay. Number three, and, and after that, we'll stop. But, <laughs> uh, but, 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 but we have to take this, into, take this into consideration, okay? Social media... The main reason it's there is for entertainment. Oh, no. Okay? So, when you go there with your boring-ass story, trying to convince somebody else that dancing is what is out there for you, but you're talking on speed of a turtle, and, and you, everybody falls asleep, but next to that job uh, pops up the cat video that dances salsa. Right, right. Believe me, everybody will watch the cat dancing salsa. <laughs> uh, the salsa dancing cat, okay? So give people entertainment. So if you want to educate somebody, entertain them and give them the information just within the line. Yeah, within yeah. Line, okay? Hey. So stop doing as if this is a big school people whenever you are on facebook instagram youtube your competition is not your other dance school around the corner every other it's, video right it's the cat video it's the <laughs> baby yeah. It's the it, 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 it's the it's the pregnancy of the girlfriend. It's those kind of things, man. The the new big the new car that came out. What the uh, features right. the features of iPhone. That is hard to have to. That is a competition. So start watching what your competition in, in your head is doing, which is the dance around the corner, and start watching what iPhone what. Apple is doing. Start watching why people are watching that salsa dancing cat for the fifth hundred million times. <laughs> what why people did not watch your video more than five times. You have a problem, my friend. Yeah. You are just boring. 
Um, <laughs> wait, real quick, real quick. I don't think I heard it, man. You you said you said you know your follower count didn't matter. Um, yeah. so if if your follower count doesn't matter, then what metric are you looking for? Engagement is that is that what matters then? Yes, man. Okay, engagement. Uh, and the great thing, this is it. Okay, I I I did stop going after followers. If you go after engagement, your followers will come anyway, yeah. because whenever you have a high engagement, Facebook and Instagram will the the algorithm, the, the big brother thing behind the scenes will start thinking like, hmm, this guy is performing very well. Don't you have to. You have to think about this, right? This platform, those platforms out there, for instance, Instagram or Facebook, they want people to stay as long as possible on their platform. Right. So if you are putting shit content out there, sorry for my French. You get um, it. Um, so people won't engage or watch your videos. They don't want to show it to somebody else. Because whenever they show it to somebody else, actually, they are just giving them one more reason to go out of the app. So they want to show them only the good stuff. Right, right, okay? right. And the only way they measure the good stuff is how many likes the video got, how many comments it got, how many saves it got, how many times it was shared. So stop going after followers. Because as soon as you got the likes, the comments, the shares, the save, Instagram will work for you. Okay. So you don't have to work as hard anymore. Okay, so no, I understand that. You get it? Yeah, and you yeah, go yeah. To the trick, what do you have to do to get people to engage? Exactly. Because it's not because before people have to engage. It's 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 a time thing, right? Again, you're competing not only with the other dance video, but you're competing with the uh, salsa dancing cats, the baby of the neighbor, the new car of of re, your colleague, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. uh, you have to ask the, the right questions. You have to give them the right visuals. You have to give them the right sound. You have to give them the right tune. You have to give them the right feeling. Yeah. yeah, trigger all those five senses. Yeah, man. So as soon as you don't trigger the five senses, people won't do it. And it, it's what you want them to exactly. do. Exactly. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Let me um, let me ask you this, man. You know, I guess at this stage in your career, man, um, how would you define or, or what is success for Guepa? You know, how would you? How would you say, okay, now this is successful? Or is it already successful for you? Uh, one of the first mentors told me, because I asked him what the success, right? You will hear this as many times as possible if you start your career. Uh, like, what is success? When, when am I successful? He told me, whenever you put on a goal and you keep on working towards that goal, Every day you are successful. Hey. So that's the first time I actually uh, grasped the the whole idea of success, being successful. Because actually everybody who sets a goal and go after it seriously every day is successful. Okay. Our main goal is to get as many people as possible to get introduced to this Latin dance thing. Uh, and that's happening every day, man. Yeah. It's happening every day. And, and it's not only happening through our own platform. Bro, if I can help you fix your marketing so you are reaching more people, I'm happy, man. That's exactly what we want. That's why we're doing this. Yeah. Because, again, I know in the world there is 7.5 billion people. Right. Okay. If you go now on the streets in Kuala Lumpur and ask them, do you know anything Latin? I can guarantee you that 95% will say, Latin? What's that? Is it a good food? They don't know what it is, man. So 
we have to help everybody else out there. Just if we got one guy in Kuala Lumpur that can that can do salsa, I want to help that guy fix his marketing so he can reach more people, man. Okay. That's my okay. That's my thing. So. Uh, and if we can reach more people to become more happy at the other side of the world, we got to go, man. Still working on legacy, bro. Yeah, I feel like I feel like my goal is kind of similar to yours, man. With me, like interviewing dancers, I feel like um, I'm kind of helping them reach more people as well, man. So I, I'm yeah. excited. No, great job, man. Thank you for doing that, man. That's exactly the reason why I accepted this this interview. <laughs> because a lot of people asked me before. This is one of the first. No, actually. This is the first time ever I did an interview hey, uh, hey. Uh, on a podcast because uh, when I asked people why did they want to do the interview, it, it sounded like they just want to get to pick my brain, right? Yeah, uh -huh. try to help anybody else out there. So that's one of the first thing I asked you, and you told me this. So as soon as you're starting helping other people, I'm there, man. Hey, hey. I'm there, bro. I'm there. <laughs> that makes me if happy. You, if you're helping, if, if, if you're helping somebody else and I can help you help somebody else, I'm still helping myself. I, that's that kind of selfish I am. <laughs> yeah. So if you think I'm doing this for you, no, man, I'm doing this for myself. <laughs> I don't know, that's just a joke, but at the end of the day, you get a picture, right? So Yeah, of course. If you know your goal, you can... You can help others without feeling that you have been that somebody stole something from you because right, you're right, exactly exactly on what you want. Mm. That's big, man. That's really big, yeah. yeah. That makes me uh, happy, bro. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, man. You're you're doing good, doing good things, man. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, really maybe maybe we should start to collab with you, man. Bro, I would love that. That'd be so awesome, man. Yeah, man. You should get it in the platform, bro. Bro, go oh, do. Don't don't. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Um, I want to ask you this too, man, real quick, man. Well, first, I want to, I want to thank you, Bradley. I want to thank you so much, man. You know, for taking time out today, to talk to me, man. It means a lot to me. Yeah, man. No thanks, bro. Exactly. You know why I'm doing this? I'm doing exactly for my people out there. We're trying to reach more people. Yeah. Uh, 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 and make everybody happy, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, real quick, tell me, man. I guess um. You know, what are some upcoming events? Do you have anything going on in your life? The launch of uh, is uh, marketing for dancers is a big thing. Yeah. Uh, um, um, on 24th of August, we are launching our first event ever that will be called I Love Latin. Uh, hey. And it's going to be in, a, the, in Holland, right? The Netherlands, right? The, the first edition will be in Amsterdam, right? Oh, yes. okay, okay. Uh, it will be on uh, 24th of August, as I told you before. And this is like the, where I want everybody to come out of their shell. Uh, I'm, I'm inviting the Latin junkies and those people that don't know Latin at all to come to a party, mingle to each other, and we try to set the stage as good as possible. So even if you can't set, set one step of salsa, you will still have a great time. And that's what's lacking now in the Latin dance scene. If you ask me, because if you go to a Latin dance event right now, bro, and you cannot dance, you will have a shit time, bro. You just come on the sidelines watching, right? Yeah, man. And, and, and again, you can be watching, but it's not entertainment entertaining enough for you to watch because you are you don't you can't understand what's going on so it's not like the there is a light show going on it's not like that there is uh, animation going on for you that you can do your your zumba kind of kind of move there it, right. there's anything. It, it's like or you can dance salsa on two or salsa on one and you should have at least uh, gone to 15 lessons before, or else just stand on the on the side and drink your ass off. Yeah. So uh, hopefully socializing, maybe socializing as well. And most of them will do that because those Latin junkies don't talk, bro. Mm, okay. <laughs> That's the problem. So they come there, they don't talk to anybody else. As soon as they start 
to stop dancing this this song. Uh, I think even half a minute before the song stops, they're already watching for the next one to dance with. Right, right. You know how it works, right? It's yeah, I, I've I've been to socials. I've been to congresses, man. So I've seen it. Yeah, so it's it. Those Latin junkies are not uh, stopping to dance to go social with nobody else. And again, it's also the way the event is set up, right? So if you got an event and you come for, I'm just saying, salsa romantica on two, and there was an organizer crazy enough to make a salsa romantica on two rule. Uh -huh. A moment for you. Oh, I have a moment to take a break now because there is a salsa. Uh, there is a bachata coming up. Uh -huh. And you don't like bachata, so you can go uh, to the bar or talk to your friends because they will. They were sending you five hours long of salsa romantica, and for instance, everybody in that room only dance on two, right? right. So. The, the way we set this event up is so the music will be mixed in a way that even if you don't like bachata, you will still have a chance to dance it. Even if you don't like salsa, you will still have to dance it because there is enough entertainment going on. Yeah. Uh, uh, we will take this to the world, man. So we, uh, we start we start in Amsterdam, uh, New York, we are coming there. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, okay, okay. Uh, uh, maybe getting this to Italy also. So, That'd be uh, awesome, man. No man, we, we we will take this big thing. It, it, it's take this thing big. It, it will be an event for us in the Latin dance scene to show what the happiness we feel to the people who don't know the Latin dance scene yet. But it's exactly an event that you can bring your friend that never dances salsa before. But you couldn't take it to your social because if you take it to your social, they will look at you and say, like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you get it? Yeah. So you can get it, get get all your friends that cannot dance, introduce them to this thing, like, hey, you can stay there, there is be, there will be enough entertainment. We will throw uh this party uh, we'll even have a uh, silent disco in there, man. And I don't, That's with the headphones, I guess, right away. Yeah, man. We have been trying that thing, and it will work awesome. Uh, we already did into a two uh, uh, trial events before. Um, the great thing about the, the 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 silent disco is that if you don't like what they are playing on one channel, you can still stay on the dance floor yes. and uh, uh, dance whatever they have on the other channel. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. So yeah, that's that's really, really cool. That is really cool. You're right. Yeah. So if you don't like salsa, we still have those uh, Latin, um, how do you say that? It's guilty pleasures that everybody <laughs> have heard on the radio. Nobody know how to sing them, but you still <laughs> like them. You know that? You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. I didn't uh, talk yeah. about. Like, and then, 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 and so they, they, that's, that's it, man. One thing I have seen in, in, outside of the Latin dance is like a lot of people like the Latin vibe. But they cannot go to a Latin dance party because as soon as they arrive there, they feel like, okay. It's kind of intimidating I, or what? Yeah, I'm not part of this cult. So I'm not invited. It's like I'm here at this party, but I'm not invited. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's like the, those mean things in those in those teen movies, man. Yeah, it is, man. Yeah, it can be like that for it can be intimidating, especially for like maybe a beginner who's new to the scene. So I don't understand that. It can even even be intimidating for somebody who came from another country, right? To, to a specific scene. I'm just saying uh, Amsterdam scene, and everybody's only dancing to people they know. Man, that's, right, that's right, right. Yeah, crazy. but it's it's about the way the events are set up, the way the playlist is put together, the way the entertainment is put together, that, that, and that's what we're trying to change now. And again, I'm not saying that we are going to change the world in one day, but we are trying, man. 
We started with photography. We did the, yeah, I don't know. Same, I on, on introducing this thing to a lot of people. And we're uh -huh. trying to get that feeling that we, we did online, bring it offline. Man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I understand that, man. Uh, yeah. uh, real quick, man. Um, let, let me know or how, let the people know. How can people, you know, get in contact with you? How can they reach out to you? First, if you really need me, just uh, send a mail to info at guerpa.com. Uh, one of us will uh, read it. Uh, but if you need specific marketing tips, just watch those uh, marketing tips for dancers videos who will start coming out at the end of July. Hey, so nice. if, you're awesome. if you're listening to this after July to 2019, go to Guepa and check the Instagram stories. Yeah. Uh, IGTV of uh, Guepa because there we will launch it. Uh, and on YouTube, you can find it also. I, I, I gave you a tip. Just go uh, look out for marketing tips for dancers on YouTube, and we will be there. I mean, hey, hey. We'll overload the place with, with, with marketing tips. And it will be totally free until you really like what we are saying. You can get more of us. but Or go to www.marketingforddancers.com Marketing, F-O-R, dancers.com Show enough. Show enough, man. Like I said. Like I said, Bradel, or, man. Yeah, man. Or, or else you can still reach to me personally on Instagram. Go to Bridal Miguel on Instagram and reach out to me. But hey. www Instagram for the uh, marketing for dancers. <laughs> marketing for dancers .com will work. We'll do okay. Fine. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, and I guess for all the videos, man, just put that hashtag Webby, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. If yeah. you're feeling the grip, just use the hashtag triple A and scream it out loud. As soon as you feel it, you have to scream it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man. I like the way you say it, man. You say it really cool, yo. <laughs> and the office call me crazy, but uh, they know when I close my close myself in the office like this. And keep working till five o'clock in the morning just to put out the content for you guys. Yeah. Uh, um, because this is not easy, man. I don't if doubt we don't, it. If we don't put as money as much content out there of value, right? We have to work hard, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Um, Bradell, man, I got said, man, I want to thank you so much, man. I really, I really enjoyed this conversation, man. You um, you dropped a lot of information. You gave a lot of value, man. I, I definitely enjoyed it, man. Yeah, man. I, I hope you mean that you help a lot of people. Of course. As soon as I'll help a lot of you guys. If you feel helped, please drop a comment in, 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 in the comment box below because we want to know exactly how we helped you here. And even if you didn't like it, if, if, please, if you didn't like it, please tell me. Please tell me because maybe if I change that, we can help more people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The feedback is always important. Yeah, man. I, I, I don't mind if it's bad or good, man. Yeah. Give me feedback. Yeah, yeah, that's big, man. Bradell, man, thank you so much, man. I wanna um I guess I you want to say just enjoy the rest of your day, man. Yeah, man. I'm uh it's uh it's late right here, but uh we are still have to grind our way to launch this thing, man. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Thank you for the interview, bro. It was nice to have you uh, to oh, be bro. on your show. It was an honor, actually, even if you have a hurric you had a hurricane just a few hours, right? Oh, bro, it's still going on, man. It's supposed to go through all this weekend. Yeah, so this guy is sitting there. This is commitment, <laughs> people. I want you to know, okay? This is commitment. There is a hurricane going on out there. <laughs> this is going out. Not giving excuses and still making it happen, bro. Oh, I appreciate man. that. Man. I, I think it's an honor that you came on the show, man. So I'm just thankful for that, man. Thank you so much, bro. <laughs> hey, thank you, man. And again, if you feel it, scream it. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey no doubt, brother, man. Take it easy, man.
I, I don't take it easy, man. I take it hard. Working every oh, okay. day. All right, so uh, uh, please, please don't take it easy either, bro. All Work right. on goals so you can be successful, man. Okay, all right. Work hard, brother. Work hard, bro. Yeah, man. If, and, and whenever you feel like you don't know it anymore, because you don't know how to market to people, just go to marketingfordancer.com. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Right. But you see what I'm doing, man. I'm still talking, by the way, because uh, I want people to know that it's very, very important that you can be awesome at your job, but if you don't tell anybody else about it. Yeah, yeah, okay. But it, yeah, right? you got to market. You got to put it out there. Uh, it sounds kind of annoying, but if I don't do it, Nobody will do it for me. That's bro. so true. It's so true, man. That's that's real talk, though, man. Yeah, man. So right, well, hold on, hold on, wait. So hold on, two lefty podcast. Uh, go check out some amazing interviews I have of some amazing people, right? Of some amazing dancers. Yeah, man. I have to say it. I I wanted to say it to you at the end of the interview, but I mean, bro, we have been talking for one and a half hour. I haven't heard the two lefty podcast name being dropped one time. I, I I don't I don't so I need to say it more often then. Yeah man, you have to drop that as as soon as you open your mouth to say me here sitting with my two left feet still oh, man. one ah, bro you have to drop the tagline every time you talk okay. about again if you don't do it I won't do it for you and this okay. is the same advice I'm giving everybody listening to us right now that want to market this stuff out there if you don't say it please. Tell me, who will say it for you? Nobody's going to say it for me, man. Oh, man, I, I, I'm just set, setting the barrier out there. Because, again, if you start in saying it to it to it that, like that, like like every two sentences you drop in your brand in there, uh, your clients will start dropping it without them knowing it. Yeah. You know? So if you, if you have something like two left feet dance school, and whatever you say is to left feet dance school doing their two as, as soon as they walk out there, uh, they won't say I just was to the dance school. I was a two left. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You got it. Yeah, I sort of. So, so uh, I, I stopped talking because we have to work, man. But thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, hey, I want to thank you so much, brother, man. Uh, Guepa is doing major things for the dance community, and to the feet podcast is doing some amazing things as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good job, man. Yeah. Hey, thank you for having me here, man. All right, but, all right, buddy. Out. You. You. That's all it is. Hey, everyone. Uh, if you made it this far to all the end of the video, I want to thank you so much. Um, my overall goal with making these interviews and these episodes is uh, to give a voice to dancers, you know, to give them a platform to speak their story. So uh, if this is of value to anyone, then that that means the world to me. Um, my overall goal is to give value to the dance community. So if you find no value in this, and I, I urge you to please let me know where I can improve on. Um, I, I truly want to, you know, just, uh, give value and content to, to the dance community. Um, so please let me know how I can improve, where I'm messing up, because to be a hundred percent honest with you, um, you know, I'm learning along the way as I do this. I, I truly am. So, um, to be able to interact with, you know, the dance community, it means the world to me because it. It gives me feedback and it lets me know, you know, what I'm doing right, where I can improve upon, um, you know, what I'm doing wrong, which I feel like might maybe more important. Um, so please, if you all could could comment and just let me know what you think, it, it means the world to me because you know that feedback just helps me improve. So um, please comment uh, as well, you know. Please like and subscribe. That means a lot as well. Um, but. You know, I want to say thank you so much for for just watching this because it means the world to me. Um, you know, I want to I want to take you on this journey of the Two Love Feet podcast. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for it. So, once again, thank you so much.